Hey there, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 5, talking about solving any linear equation today. This we're talking about solving linear equations in today's lesson. First of all, I began with just some equation talk here, looking at some equations that were set up here. I'm just saying what would you do to kind of go about solving these things here. Um, and, and there's a variety of ways of going about solving problems. So for example, perhaps I might start by subtracting 5 from both sides in order to come up with a negative x equals 3 right but I don't want to always keep that as a negative x so I, what I would do in my case here I'd multiply everything by a negative 1 both sides by a negative 1 just turn that into an x equals a negative 3 okay this is an example here this is one of these situations where I've done it enough times to know if I multiply both sides by a negative 1 what I'm doing is I'm essentially doing that in order to change the signs of everything in this problem right here so the negative x becomes a positive x and the positive 3 becomes a negative 3. And so you'll start to find that the more you do that, the more you recognize I can do it quickly without having to think about it too much. In this case, number 2, the x is already positive, so I'm going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides. And so 2 and a negative 1 is a positive 1, and so x is going to equal 1 right there. Okay. So on this one here, that was pretty straightforward. This one here, I want to go ahead and divide by a negative 3 to make the x positive. And by dividing by a negative 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3, but because it's a positive divided by a negative, it stays a negative 3 there for a solution. And finally over here, I divide both sides by a negative 5, and we end up with a positive 2 equals x, because a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive here. In this next activity, you are given some cards to with an equation. And what you were doing is you're taking turns about kind of the next move of the step you would do to solve an equation. Okay, so you had several equations to work through. And again, there's always different ways of approaching an equation and solving it. So as an example, one of your cards would have been listed as negative 6x minus 7 equals 4x minus 2. To solve this equation here, what I would first do is I would go ahead and add 6x to both sides. And I'm going to do that so that I end up with a positive x value just because I prefer to work with a positive x value. I'm going to move the 6x over there. I can then also go ahead and move the, well let's rewrite it the way you've been working with. You rewrite the, everything as it is. So you have negative 7 equals 10x minus 2. And then I'm going to add 2 to both sides, right? So negative 7 plus a 2 becomes a negative 5 which equals 10x. I divide both sides by 10. So now x is going to be equal to negative 1 half. Okay, <laughs> I can leave it as a fraction or I could turn that into 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 as another way of writing that one down there. Okay, so that's um, one of the equations that you had to work with. Another one you had to work with was going to be um, with a fraction where you had 1 half of 7x minus 6 equals 6x minus 10. Now the first step I would take here in this one is I would multiply everything by 2. And again, everything by 2 means I'm going to multiply this by 2 right there. Okay, It's in the parentheses. I can leave this part alone and I can multiply that value by 2 and that value by 2. So the part in the parentheses is going to come down to 7x minus 6. Okay, This goes away. 2 times 6 is 12. I'm going to x there. And 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. So I have 7x minus 6 equals 12x minus 20. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 7x from both sides so that I have 5x over here. So negative 6 equals 5x minus 20. I'm going to add 20 to both sides now so that I'm now left with 14 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5. And yep, it's not a very nice answer, but 14 fifths equals x. Can I leave it like that? I can leave it like that. Or I could choose to write it as a mixed number instead of improper. And 5 goes into here two times with 3 left over. So I have five, 2 and, sorry, 4 fifths, 4 left over, 2 and 4 fifths. Or I could write that as a decimal value, which would be um, <laughs> 2.8. <coughs> so all those would work as well. You had two other ones that you worked out in class as well. You had 1 half x plus 7 um, equals x plus 13. And again, if I wanted to multiply everything by 2, I could do that to clear that fraction out. I'd multiply this by 2, that by 2, that by 2, and that by 2. So I end up with x plus 14 equals 2x plus 26. All right. 
I subtract x, subtract x, so I'm left with just an x on this side. If I subtract 26 here, subtract 26 there, then I'm left with a negative 12 on this side, and that becomes my answer, x equals negative 12. And the last problem you had to work with today um, was going to be, I think it was, um, yeah, 2 times x plus 7 equals negative 4x plus 14. All right, get down the paper for you there. So use distributive property first of all to put that 2 throughout. So we have 2x plus 14 equals negative 4x plus 14. Now when I have 14s on both sides, I can simply eliminate those, or I could do minus 14 both sides, which means they go away. So I have 2x equals a negative 4x. If I divide both sides by 2, for example, then I have x equals negative 2x, right? Well, let's do this. Let's, yeah, that's fine. x equals negative 2x, and that's fine there. So now I can divide both sides by negative 2, right? If I chose to, or actually, uh, let's subtract. Let's do it this way. Let's do a subtraction problem. Just got ahead of myself a little bit. Okay, so let me go ahead and add 4x to this side, add 4x to this side, so 6x equals 0. And so we have to ask ourselves, x times what number will give you 0? Well, that's going to be x equals 0, and that would be our solution for that one right there. Okay, let's take a look at the next page, at activity number 3 for this lesson. <coughs> On this one, it says that, Tyler says he invented a number puzzle. He asked Claire to pick a number and then asked her to do the following. So it says triple the number, subtract 7, double the result, subtract 22, and divide by 6. Claire says she now has a negative 3. Tyler says her original number must have been a 3. How did Tyler know that? Well, let's take a look at what she did. First of all, we're going to take a number. We'll call that x. Now to triple it means I'm going to multiply it by 3. So I'm going to write 3 times x. For whatever that result's going to be, I will subtract 7 from it right here. Okay? And then I'm going to take that result, 3x minus 7, and double it, which means I'm going to put a 2 out in front to double that result there. Whatever I get here, I will then subtract 22. And from that whole thing, then, I will divide the whole thing by 6. And Claire says her answer was negative 3. Okay? So let's see how the herd and original number would have been a 3. That's what Tyler's saying. <laughs> So to get the 6 over here, I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. So 6 and 6, that'll eliminate that. And so I have 2 times 3x minus 7 minus 22 equals a negative 18. Distribute, it, distribute the 2 there, so I end up with 6x minus 14 minus 22 equals a negative 18 right there. Okay, looking good so far. All right, so a negative 14 and a negative 22, I can put those together and end up with a negative 36. So 6x minus 36 equals negative 18. I can add 36 to both sides, and 36 minus 18 is going to be a positive 18, which equals 6x. And then we need to divide both sides by 6, and so that x is going to equal, in our case here, 3. And so x will equal 3, and that will be our answer on this one right there. So as a summary then, what we have is we would say that when we have an equation with one variable, when you have an equation with one variable, there are many different ways to solve it. So it's up to you to decide which way you want to go about solving it. Whether you distribute things quickly or do it in a different order or divide things out, it's totally up to you. You decide which way makes the most sense for you when you do these things. So the bottom line for this summary is this line right here from lots of experience. We learn when to use different approaches, and that's kind of the key thing. The more you practice this, the more you figure out which approach is going to get you the answer in the quickest amount of time to solve it there. So take a break, do your homework, and then we'll let's take a look at your homework solutions in just a second. Okay, so today's homework. <coughs> First, we have to solve these equations, explain or show your reasoning. So we're going to begin, first of all, in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and distribute here the 2 throughout. So I'm going to have a 2x plus 10 equals 3x plus 1. Okay, that's my first step right there. Let's see if I can brighten this up a little bit for you. 
not sure if that's gonna work. Uh, oops, one more. There we go. Ooh, a little two by eight. Coming in. And uh, there we go. Okay. All right. So then we can subtract two x from this side. Subtract two x from that side. It leaves us with an x over here. And we can subtract one. Subtract one, and leaves us with a nine there. So x equals nine, and we're good there. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit here because it's really small. There we go. So over here, let's go ahead and add the 2y to both sides. Add a 2y, so I have a 5y there. Add a 4 to both sides, so 5y is going to equal 6 plus 4 is 10. Divide both sides by 5, and so that y equals 10 divided by 5, which is 2. Over here, I can distribute first if I choose to, or I can divide both sides by 3. Or really, think about it, I could do multiply both sides by a 1 third. So 3 times a third makes that go away. So I have n plus 2 equals 9 divided by 3 is simply 3. So I have 3 times 6 minus n. I can then distribute to have 18 minus 3n equals n plus 2. Okay. And so if I add 4, add 3 in over here, I'm left with a 4n. 4n equals subtract 2, subtract 2 equals 16. Divide both sides by 4, and n equals 4. Sorry, I got a little sloppy, a little, not a lot of space there. But that's the idea. Number two, it says Claire was solving an equation, but, uh, let's see, yep. But when she just checked her answer, she saw her solution was incorrect. She knows she made a mistake, but she can't find it. Where was her mistake, and what's the solution? Let's take a look here. First of all, we have her distributing the 12. We have 12 times 5 and 12 times 2. 12 times 5, it's actually going to be 60. This should be a 60 right here, not a 72. Over here, we see a 4y, and we distribute it looks like the negative 1. So she multiplies negative 1 times 5 is negative 5, and negative 1 times negative 9 should be a positive 9y. So this whole line is off in two ways. It should be written as 60 plus 24y equals 4y minus 5 plus 9y. Now I can kind of group some things together. I can put the 9 and the 4 together to make 13y minus 5 equals 24y and 60. I can subtract 13y from here, subtract 13y from there. 24 minus 13y is going to be equal to 11y. And I can subtract 60, subtract 60. That's going to be equal to negative 65. Okay. Now to get the y by itself, I divide both sides by 11, and that's really about as far as I can go. So y is going to equal negative 65 over 11. Again, I can make that a mixed number if I chose to, or I can just leave it like that. But our two mistakes was here in distributing the 12 to the 5, and also here in multiplying the negative 1 times the negative 9. Number 3, to solve each equation and check your solution. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 9 multiply both sides by 9. That makes this go away. So I'm left with 2m minus 16 equals 9 times a third is going to be 9 divided by 3, which is 3. And I'll keep the 3 out in front, plus 2m to the fourth. Distribute this out, so that becomes 6m plus 12 equals 2m minus 16. I'll subtract the 2m, subtract the 2m, so I have a 4m over here. And I'm going to subtract the 12, subtract the 12, so i left with a 28, negative 28 over there. When I divide both sides by 4, I find that negative 7 equals m. Okay? To check my solution, that would mean putting that back into there to see does it work for both sides. And it should work. Okay? Over here, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. Okay? And so I end up with r plus 2 equals a negative 2 minus 2r. Distribute the negative through is going to make that equal to negative 2, change the sign, positive 2r. Right? So subtract r, subtract r, I'm left with an r on this side, equals add 2, add 2, equals 4, and r equals 4. And finally over here, we're going to distribute once again. Okay, so 12 times 5 is 60, 12 times 2 is 24y, equals 4y, and let's go ahead and distribute the negative. It's going to be negative 6, and a negative times a negative is a positive 9y. This is very familiar to what we had up here, isn't it, right? 
pretty much the same problem, except the only difference is we have a six instead of a five. So now we're going to combine things together. So this becomes, you know, 13y minus six, 24y plus 60. So we're going to subtract 13y, subtract 13y. So we have 11y over here. And now we're going to subtract 60, subtract 60. So it equals negative 66. In this case, when we divide by 11, we find that y equals simply a negative six. It's a nice whole number and we're good to go. Let's look at number four. So let's just take a look at a graph of a linear equation. So a graph of a linear equation right here. <clears throat> Back out just a little bit there. Select all true statements about the line and its equation. Okay, so one solution is three comma two. I do need to be careful here. When I first started looking at this graph, I didn't notice the numbers here, right? There's one, two, three, here's one and two. So don't use the grid lines. So solution means it's on the line. So here's three and here's two and it's on the line. So because three comma two is on the line, we would say, yes, that's true. Another solution they say is that negative one comma one, which happens to be here, negative one comma one, so yes, that is true as well. It says one solution is at one comma three and a half or one and a half or three halves. So here's one and we know we stopped somewhere about here. <laughs> the question is, is that halfway between here and here? And we would say, yep, that is halfway through and that's gonna be a yes. Two solutions, that's not gonna be true. That's a no. <coughs> We've already found three solutions. And in fact, for the line, there are an infinite number of solutions along that line there. So for E, we would say, yes, there's infinitely many solutions, no problem. F and G, we have an equation. The only difference here with the equation is we see they have one fourth and five fourths or five fourths and one fourth. We have to take a look at this slope value here and also what's called the y-intercept. Where is this crossing the y-axis at? In our case, we're crossing the y-axis at a little over one. This is a little over one, this is one fourth. One fourth would be here and five fourths ha happens to be there. So this is gonna be a no, and this would be a yes. You could confirm that by double checking the slope part by looking at any of the points, right? If the slope is one fourth, let's verify that. We could do two minus one over three minus a negative one. And so two minus one is one, and three minus minus one becomes plus, that's a fourth, and that is the correct slope, so we're okay to say that that would be a yes. And finally, number five, a participant in a 21 mile walkathon walks at a steady rate of, so 21 miles, three miles per hour. He thinks the relationship between the number of miles left to walk and the number of hours I already walked can be represented with a slope of negative three. Do you agree with his claim? Well, we would say that would make sense. Yes, I would agree. And the reason is, is that that three miles per hour, that is his rate, right? And a slope is negative three, meaning that he has, um, like every time he walks, he's going 21 miles and he's subtracting three miles for every uh, hour that he's going at a steady rate. So we can see that it's decreasing. This rate is decreasing by negative three. So that would actually have a negative slope. For example, if he has not walked at all, he has 21 miles to go. If he's walked for one mile, one hour, he has 18 miles to go. If we consider this an X and a Y and X and a Y and find the slope of that, okay, we would say 18 minus 21 over one minus zero. 18 minus 21 is negative three over one. It's just negative three. And so we can confirm that the slope is indeed negative three. That's it for today's lesson. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.